Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture to Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. This is Ed Cohen, your broadcast host today on Global TV Talk Show, a business unit of globalbusinessnews.net. Global TV Talk Show was started as a result of the pandemic crashing our live conference and training uh, event business. And that was on. Well, the last one we did was February 27 in Washington, D.C. That's 2020, February 27. Uh, We were at uh, a mansion, in fact, the former home of President Woodrow Wilson, uh, who happened to be president of the U.S. at uh, at the time of the last pandemic. Anyway, his home has become a museum, and we rented out some space in there and held our diplomatic NGO meeting. And after that meeting, we flew home to San Diego on an empty plane. It was me and the flight crew. <laughs> it was pretty interesting. Uh, and then the next day, everything shut down. So we've been doing global TV talk shows since uh, on or about March 1, 2020. And since then, Google Analytics has tracked, they say, in their own way, about 120,000 audience page views from over 100 countries about 70% U.S., including uh, Canada, uh, 20% Europe. Our special guest today is uh, Mr. Paul Falcone, who's a worldwide famous global HR professional, global human resources executive. Welcome, Paul Falcone. Thanks, Ed. So nice to be back. It's great to have you. So very briefly... I'm going to read a quick bio, and I'd like you to interject uh, whenever you can here. Sure. <laughs> okay, we don't want to bore the audience too much, but this is really exciting <laughs> for me to have you on our show again. So Paul served as head of HR for Nickelodeon, head of international HR for Paramount Pictures, VP HR for NBC Universal, where he oversaw HR operations for NBC's Late Night and Prime Time, including The Tonight Show, SNL, in the office. Paul is, as you may know already, is a renowned expert in effective hiring, performance management, and leadership development, especially in terms of helping companies build higher performance leadership teams. We're going to get into that because during the pandemic, it's caused all kinds of issues and challenges and still is as companies try to figure out how to bring people back or what. Sure. So currently, you're uh, Chief Human Resource Officer for the Motion Picture and Television Fund. And I'd like to learn more about that. And uh, really cool, uh, Paul Falcone is continuing as a best-selling HarperCollins Leadership Author, American Management Association, SHRM author, and a longtime contributor to the HR Magazine. So one of the most interesting titles that I've seen from you is how to have 101 (laughs) or something tough conversations. So how do you recommend leaders have these kinds of tough conversations when people are remote? It's harder. Um, I I think the idea, Ed, is it has to be more purposeful and more intentional. You've got to feel your heart 
going through the phone line. If, if that, it may sound silly, but, but the reality is when you're sitting with someone right in front of them, you can talk and they can read the body language and you know each other. And even if it's a tough conversation, you can just inject your personality into it. When you take all the visuals away, when you take that human element out of it, it's really just your voice. And so I think you have to be, like I say, a little bit more purposeful, a little more deliberate. You have to kind of put yourself on the receiving end of the message. And with that, I would say it'll work. Everything is going to work. It's, we're just moving to a new paradigm in the way business works. But I do think there has to be more heart and there has to be more soul in what we're doing. It can't just be transactional. Well, that's a lot to think about. So people are worried, friends of mine uh, are worried that they're not going to get promoted if they continue to work remotely. Yeah, that's kind of true. I hate to say it. Okay, so pros and cons, right? I, I think the initial piece of COVID and, and lockdown was scary to a lot of people. But I never even heard of Zoom uh, prior to March of 2020. <laughs> and now I absolutely live on Zoom. So the technology was kind of Me just too. in time, right? And, and it's kind of taught us all that we don't have to be in the office at least eight to five, Monday to Friday, to be able to be productive. There's all sorts of stuff that's coming from that, Ed. Some managers, some owners are going to want people back in the office as soon as this is over, as if COVID never happened. You're here Monday morning at 8 till Friday morning, Friday evening at 5. Others are going to say hybrid is probably a really good thing because we're not losing productivity and it gives people more work-life balance. And still others are going to say, why are we paying for this real estate? We don't want anyone coming back. We're just selling, but you still have your job. And I think when you look at all of these pieces coming together, it's just coming together so quickly. And that's what's throwing everybody off. But the reality is you can still motivate and grow and develop teams remotely. It's just a little, like I say, it's a little bit different, a little bit more challenging, but as long as your heart and soul is in the right place, you know, you'll figure it out because they'll be able to feel the, the sincerity. They'll be able to feel that, you know, you're real. And, and again, it's harder to do if you've never met the person. It's harder to do if you're in different states. Um, or different parts of the world, actually. But the reality is the relationships can still form. So um, you've worked in large organizations and really particularly high-flying organizations. Um, so the talent, I mean, it's the same issues, but the talent is different, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, to your other point, yeah, out of sight, out of mind, I, it is harder. I mean, especially if you're accustomed to growing in your career because of the FaceTime with your boss and the opportunity to meet with your boss's boss. And you like the idea of the water cooler and sitting around the, the, the table so that people can actually see you and hear you. And that's a lot tougher when you're doing it remotely. And I get that. But high flying or not, I think this is going to be a new normal. I will be surprised if companies come back too strong with the, we're going back as if we were never starting. We never had COVID. I want you all back Monday morning at eight o'clock on this date. And don't ask for any time off or any flexibility. And the reason they're not going to do that is because they're going to lose people. I think one of the key recruiting things going forward is going to be that kind of work-life balance or work-life flexibility in how many times you have to physically come to the office. And I think that that has changed forever. I, I don't think that's going to fall off of the radar screen. And I do think it's going to be a primary tool for recruiting going forward. So uh, the word uh, could be uh, the new word, harmony. Not work-life balance, but it's, there's no such thing. So no such how, do you, thing, how, yeah. how do you put it together? Yeah. Harmonize. Or yeah, and something. flexibility. Yeah. I think that idea of that flexibility and giving people some room to make things work on their own, as long as your productivity doesn't go down, you can do it. But you have to understand there's still going to be business owners and senior executives that are not comfortable when they can't see people. There's a trust factor or whatever, or a control factor. And if I can't see you doing the work, I'm not comfortable. And to your point, there are going to be people who say, if I'm not in the office every day, they're never going to think of me when it comes to a promo. They're going to look outside because I'm invisible to them. So there's a lot going on in the dynamics on both sides of the discussion, whether you're on the ownership or leadership side or the individual contributor side. That's not going to change. We just have to carve out our new normal. So once again, a reality check is that some, some managers, uh, particularly uh, high profile and, and others, uh, when it comes to managing remote uh, workforce uh, versus live in person, um, when they're managing remote, they're seeing results, but they're not seeing how the work is getting done. Is that correct? Yep. 
and that invisibility makes some people very, very uncomfortable. Okay, so how do you have the tough conversations with, uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but with women uh, who have uh, kids at home and have gotten used to balancing, working out a schedule uh, where they can get things done and still take care of the, the house and the family? Yeah, I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, sometimes it's the dad who's the stay at home, or whatever it happens to be. And I do think, yeah, there are going to be interruptions. And some things, look, if you've got a six-month-old at home and that baby starts crying in the middle of a one-on-one -on -one discussion with your boss, I know it's awkward, but we have to be real. That's why they have a mute button. Hit the mute button, tell your boss you'll be right back, but take care of the baby. And if you have to bring the baby with you onto the Zoom call, that's not the end of the world either. I mean, I it's human. People, it's yeah, it, just, it just is. You're exactly right. It's not that big a deal. But I do think you know, there's privacy issues because now you can see into people's homes. There's all these new issues that it's the expression that I use of, you know, we're building the plane, we're flying the plane while building it. it, it you, you know, we're figuring this out as we go. There is no context that we can look at. I always say, you know, you think about the 15th century and they created the printing press and that changed everything. And then you think about the industrial revolution and that changed everything. None of that compares to what we're going through now. This is truly you know, evolutionary change at revolutionary speed. And we're going so fast that it will disorient a lot of people, both sides of the table, management ownership and individual contributor. But the reality is we've got to grab this one because we're not going backwards. And I, I'm afraid that people who fail to adapt will fall behind if they're not careful. So uh, this is a business talk. It has nothing whatsoever to do with politics, but it's all around us. But with mask mandates or not uh, vaccine, proof and uh, verify, uh, trust but verify. Um, I think it's a good idea, but what I'm not in HR. So what do you think? Well, I'll put a twist on it too, because I'm in HR and healthcare. Uh, the Motion Picture <laughs> and Television Fund is a re retirement home primarily. I mean, there's a lot more that we do than that, but that's mostly what we're known for. So it's a residential care facility for independent and assisted living, but it's also skilled nursing and long-term care and that kind of thing for people from the entertainment business. What we're seeing to try and keep the residents, you know, safe is we have gone over the top to keep it as carefully monitored, follow the rules and listen to the CDC and California Department of Public Health and whoever else, uh, which everyone who's listening to this podcast is doing the same. But the reality is, to your point, and you can't deny the 800 pound gorilla in the room. This has been so mucked. Something that should have brought us together right. has torn us apart. And you can come up with a million different reasons from politicians to news stations to everything else. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the point is it's sad to see how far we've come when a solution was so easy for us, but we just kind of fumbled the football as a, as a species. We just fumbled it on this case and we hope that we can recover before it's too late. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a timely announcement. Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career experts. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Dalzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we'd value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10 minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. 
And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. Would you agree that this is the situation <laughs> that you were just describing, this is an HR issue. Oh, yes, it is. And, and how come they haven't asked you to come join them, at least remotely? <laughs> no, wait, so you're, how do you mean, how come they, who hasn't well, asked me to come uh, join them? <laughs> the president. Um, the, this, this takes leadership and not politician acting as an HR person. Yeah, no, you're right. And in the workplace at it's so funny over the last year and a half, what I people I've basically been telling people it has been the busiest, most stressful that I've ever been through. I wouldn't trade it for anything because I really felt like we were part of the solution. Um, but the reality is, you know, it's tough. And if you don't have the strong leadership at the helm and the communication isn't happening, it really can fall apart. And one of the reasons why, you know, we're hearing about this tidal wave, this tsunami of turnover that's going on right now in the workplace. One of the reasons are people are really kind of ticked at how their companies handle the whole thing. They feel like they fumbled the football and I don't want to be part of this organization. And you're seeing a lot of changes happening because of that. But to your point, that you cannot over communicate at a time like this. The transparency is the absolute key. Even though it's scary at times, we didn't know what we were doing. We were setting up isolation units and quarantine units. We set up our own lab to do our own testing. We did all that stuff because it was the right thing to do. It was very expensive. And to the point, you're figuring out how to fly this plane while you've got the, the tools in your hand to build it. But we did it and we're still doing it. We're not out of this yet. And I just think coming from the healthcare side, in, in a way, there's an advantage to this because we've got to hear from the doctors, our own, and we get to hear from the epidemiologists and we get to hear from the nurses. So we have firsthand knowledge of it. I'm afraid that sometimes HR people who are not in the healthcare trenches are too far removed from this and they can take it very easy. And, and now is not the time to take it easy. Don't worry about wearing your mask. Don't worry about if you're, if you're not vaccinated, it's fine. You know, the states are all coming down with their own rules on this stuff and it could inadvertently be making it dangerous, dangerous exposures for people that are not intentional 
but I hate to say it, you need to be smart in this world. You have to know how to, you have to make sure you're listening to the right people at a time like this when the stakes are so high. So we try and get the word out. And for myself as a writer, I've even written about you know, COVID in a nursing home because it's been ground zero. We've had it tough. I wrote that for HR Magazine six months ago. But the reality is you try and raise awareness so everyone can get a piece of that knowledge and that wisdom. So the discussion about vaccine. All right. Now, some people are immunocompromised, uh, uh, have a pre-existing condition, but there's a remedy for that group of people. But when it comes down to personal choice, like I, I was talking with uh, somebody, I'm not going to name names, uh, but um, a beautiful, physically beautiful woman, very, very bright, very successful in marketing uh, for a large organization. Um, and she didn't, I asked her, she, I said, Hey, I've been vaccinated. I did the Moderna thing twice. I never had any issue, but I know some people have, um, how about you? And she says, that's a personal choice. And I'm not offended that you asked, but it's a personal choice. <laughs> and that was the end of that conversation. Right. The, right. The, that became a tough conversation, my friend. And, you know, it certainly did. <laughs> and I, we're, we're, how, how would you have handled that? I just shut up and redirect it. Yeah. No, the funny thing, Ed, it, it, it's kind of one of those picture battles. I, I think in reality, if your company has some kind of program that says you must wear a mask or you must be tested, right? Uh, or you must be vaccinated, whatever it happens to be, um, then you have the right to talk about it. Shy of that, I don't know that I would go there. I mean, if that's not really part of the program that your organization has, to ask someone in casual, uh, so are you vaccinated, is almost like saying, so do you vote blue or red? It, it's, just, <laughs> it's just too hard. And again, there's a visceral response that's out there. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to see this. I'm in my mid fifties. I look at this and I thought I've never seen anything like it. I never thought I'd see anything like this in this country. But the truth is we're split and I don't know how we're gonna unsplit. And I'm hoping that each one of us individually can be part of that solution, but this is tough. This is not easy. Well, in Hollywood, you know Hollywood, uh, but uh, there's usually some weird bad thing that happens and everybody comes together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this could have been the boogeyman that brought us all together. That's the funny thing. The whole globe could have come together on this one. And instead, you know, we, we as a country, as are many countries, you know, they're having a hard time figuring out, is it a federal mandate? Is it state individual mandates? Where does it all go? And it leads to a lot of confusion. Plus the fact that the thing, the alpha is now a Delta and now they're talking about a Lambda variant and, and these kinds of things, it's scary and the rules are changing. So that's why I say, if there's one piece about this that anyone can listen to this and walk away with, it's you have to communicate, you have to be transparent, put out those notices, talk to the employees, um, robocalls are fine, emails are good, posting on the company internet is fine, um, putting you know desk drops, keep the word coming out there because they're frightened and they're worried about themselves and they're worried about their families, um, unless they're not, unless they think that the whole thing is a, is a farce, which is unfortunate too, but that's also a part of our reality that we have to communicate to. So. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, proof is in the pudding, as they used to say, um, the news and today is august 6 year 21 um the news yesterday anyway was that in the south the southern u.s 99 percent of people in the hospitals in serious condition yeah. have not been vaccinated for whatever the reason right and, and that right. that is not opinion that's apparently that's a, a terrible fact yeah. Well, let's um, step back from this topic. Um, so as a senior leader, uh, you have to uh, find and motivate other leaders. And um, so let's just talk about that uh, level. Uh, you're up uh, at a, a senior role. And then there's, let's just say I'm, I'm a junior uh, manager in the organization and, and you're the top guy. So how would you motivate me or influence me to think about certain situations other than what you've just said, in addition to what you've just said, 
to uh, uh, succeed in me being a better influencer or guide or coach? What's the right terminology to use? Yeah, the funny thing, you bring up such a good point, Ed, and I talk about this a lot. We've lost the ability to sit around the campfire and pass the, the wisdom down from the elders to the to, to the juniors. We, we don't, we've lost it as a society. The whole world has. The way I tell my spiel is, you know, hundred years ago, they started with movies. And in the 1950s, they started with television. And then when they got to the 1980s, the whole world of broadcast turned into narrow cast because then they were moving towards cable channels. And if you like fishing, watch this. And if you like cooking, watch that. And so the broadcast became narrow cast, which ultimately became monocast in the last decade where or two decades, whatever, where everything is going with, you go on the internet, you look for a pair of shoes. And before you know it, you got 15 emails and pop-ups showing that there's all different shoes out there you can buy. But we've lost our ability to tell our own story ever since we've been watching someone else's story, whether it's on motion picture or it's on television or it's in emails and, and, and social media. The reality is you got to sit around the campfire, call it the table in your office, call it the, the, the lunch table, call it the boardroom table. We've got to pass that wisdom along and you've got to take people up to the 30,000 foot view. They've got to see this for the wisdom that it's worth. We are going through a tough time. Our country has gone through and the world has gone through tough times like this, tougher times in many instances too. But how do you get them to the point where they're thinking a certain way? And the key is not to lock yourself in your office. The key is to get out there and talk to people to listen. And when I say listen, I don't just mean with your ears. I mean with your eyes and with your heart. You got to really listen to where they're at. And you have to help them kind of see the bigger picture on this stuff. I don't proselytize. My job is not to sit there and say, you need to do this and you need to do that. I don't do that. I don't judge, but I do observe. And in the observation, you really can see that there's a lot of confusion out there. There's so much noise. People are burned out. The COVID burnout is real. And it's like, how do you motivate team members? And the answer is part of it is you've got to give them some room to let the steam out. Part of it is you got to take them to that 30,000 foot level so they can kind of see the broader picture of what's going on. And you can talk about it in a safe way without offending anybody. And part of it is you have to help them define themselves because a lot of times they're going so fast from project to project to project to project, they're chasing their tails and they kind of lose the broader perspective. And then when they burn out, then they want to leave and it's all drama. Be that kind of boss, quiet the room. Help them focus in on what's important to them. Talk about career and professional development. I know there's a lot of noise right there and I know you're tired, but let's focus in on something that's important to you that's not COVID or that's not the fact that we've had turnover or we can't find anyone out there for the open jobs we have. I know that's a reality, but put that in a box for a minute. Put that box on a shelf. I want to talk about you and how you're doing. If you have a manager who can have that kind of conversation with their people, you'll have loyalty to, from here to the moon. Paul, what's your uh, uh, preferred uh, website so our audience can reach out to you? Oh, it's paulfalconehr.com, just as you right. would think. That, so. That's easy. Pretty let's logical. Talk, so let's talk about the upcoming Sherm convention in Las Vegas. <laughs> um, it's going to be in person and, uh, and online. Right. Um, so as uh, a press member, they're giving me access, and so I'll going to try my hardest to get there in person for at least a day maybe good for more. you ed great um, uh, so i assume you're going to speak no actually no um i was invited the way my calendar worked this year i'm going to be in chicago so um no not even virtually to... no no not this time not this time couldn't get to it well i'm really honored to have you on this program That's yeah great. thank you thank so you so let's, let's let's talk a little bit about your your latest book okay first of all identify it please well, it's called the Paul Falcone Workplace Leadership Series, and it's actually five books. So they'll be sold individually, but also as a, like a gift set. It's really cool. I said, my name is going to be the title. And they said, yes, your name is the title. I said, I'm in. <laughs> Tell me what you want me to write. <laughs> that, that is cool. So is this a summation of the best of the best? Yeah, kind of sort of. You know, it's so funny. I, I wanted it to be a training tool, and I want it to be a cradle to grave talent management type of type of resource that... Look, in the trenches, Ed, it's hard to find the right material to train your employees. And most of the material that's out there usually tells you what to do. It doesn't tell you how to do it. You know, sexual harassment has quid pro quo harassment and hostile work environment harassment. And it's like, okay, that's the what. 
How do you inject respect into the workplace? What does it sound like when you're talking to your team? And how do you create an environment where people feel like, you know, they're loved, they're cared for, they can motivate themselves, someone's got their back. And that's kind of what my writing is always focused on. So this book of the series of five books will take them from step to step to step, hopefully to get them through um, that, 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 that maze, that, that, you know, the challenge. So um, let's do a, a quick summary of uh, the best of the best tips <laughs> um, for uh, people, leaders in any kind of company organization. Um, Broadcast, tell your story frequently <laughs> is what I've heard. Exactly. Well, be real, be human. You know, a lot of times, man, they're, everyone's stressed at every level of the organization, senior executive, middle management, you know, individual contributor, they're all stressed out. And I feel like if you're not giving them some space and making room for them, A, to be able to vent, B, to be able to feel like they can talk to you about needs that aren't necessarily COVID because people are tired of talking about it too and kind of focus in on them, I think that's gonna make a big difference. The other thing I was gonna say, Ed, real quick, not to plug the book, but the first of the five books is on workplace ethics. And I think we need to have those discussions again. What, they belong. What does that mean? Well, workplace, workplace ethics. Well, it, it, part of it, when you think of ethics, you think of compliance and you think of the Sarbanes-Oxley law and you know making sure that you're disclosing conflicts of interest and blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. And I cover that. But, but the reality becomes is ethics is personal. And that's really the point. And how do you talk to your team about creating a, and sustaining a moral and ethical work environment? And what does respect in the workplace really mean? So my goal is to kind of help the managers, the person who's reading the book, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of focus in on, you know, avoid these um, landmines because these can be set up for you. These are real. You've got to be, be sure of that. Yeah. Make sure you're checking the compliance boxes and Sarbanes-Oxley is a very good guideline. Um, but if you're really going to make that environment special, it has to come from a standpoint of you're leading with your heart and you're communicating your values. And that's really how you do it. I've been talking with Paul Falcone. And uh, one more time, uh, announce your uh, LinkedIn page or website. Uh, the website, Ed, is paulfalconehr.com. Okay, so thank great. You. Thank you for being on Global TV. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you. And we're going to get this out across our network. That's wonderful. Ed. Always a pleasure to be with you too. Thank you. Please come back. Stay safe. Sure thing. Thanks. This is Ed in San Diego signing off. Paul Falcone in uh, LA Metro. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.